Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about phylogeny. Phy phylogeny is a consideration of the evolutionary life history of organisms, and so phylogenies are basically inferred trees of life based on a lot of various types of characteristics that we can use to um, sort all living organisms. And so I wanted to emphasize a couple things in this particular video that morphological, structural kinds of traits are, are very useful at, in determining phylogenetic trees, uh, determining phylogeny or life history, and molecular data such as amino acid sequences and DNA sequences. Um, this one being maybe the preferential one these days in, in the study of phy phylogeny and sorting these things out, which is the, what systematics uh, scientists that study this and organize them into these trees work with. And so all of this is sort of inferred. And so systematics gather information about the morphologies, the various uh, genes, and the DNA sequences and the biochemistry of living organisms. And so um, that's what the, we're going to talk about here. And so the phylogenetic um, heritage is based on phenotypes, but more importantly, genetic similarities. And I want to emphasize that. So, but when you're looking at that, when you're looking at the actual ancestry of a group of organisms, we can say that those shared characteristics are the result of homologies. So these are, this is important. So organisms with similar morphology and similar DNA sequences are likely to be more closely related than uh, with organisms that, don't, that do, do not have similar sequence and don't have similar structures. But you have to be careful when you're looking at uh, constructing phylogeny. And so systematics need to be able to distinguish whether or not a characteristic is similar as a result of Homolo homology, which is the uh, shared ancestry, or whether or not it's an analogy or analogy, depending on how you want to pronounce that. Uh, but analogy is due to convergent evolution. So analogous structures are different than homologous structures. So homologous is that these organisms seemingly unrelated but hu but not human cat whale bat if you look at their at the anatomy these particular structures here if you look at the humerus and the and the radius and ulna these are similar uh, because of common shared ancestry and so this is evidence that these that these organisms have descended from a common ancestor likewise even something like a marine mammal the whale which is fin doesn't serve the same purpose as like a human arm does, but inside of the fin, it still possesses the homologous structures suggesting that there is an ancestral uh, relationship, a common ancestor between the human and the whale. Like, the, you know, of course it's reduced the humerus and the radius and ulna, and there's like extension, extended phalange in the fin, but this is, a great example of how someone in systematics would use uh, homologous structures to put together uh, phylogeny. Another, uh, and when you look here closely, this is from um, the book Moby Dick. When you look at the whale's fin, it looks very similar to the human hand right here. I think that's kind of interesting. And so now, as opposed to analogous structures, now I was mentioning that those are the result of convergent evolution, to converge, meaning to come together. And so let me come back over here. So convergent evolution. So in other words, two dissimilar organisms begin to look more similar, even though they have not much in common in terms of their ancestry. So things like, for example, um, you know, the flying, flying squirrel, of North America or a mouse and a marsupial mouse. These are not common. They, they do not have common ancestors, but in a similar environment, uh, they begin to look more similar. And so there's, uh, those are analogous structures. And again, a classic example of this would be like the shark uh, 
which is a, a type of fish, and a dolphin, which is completely different entirely, a mammal, uh, begin to look similar because they're in a similar environment and their particular traits have adapted to suit that particular environment well, but it doesn't mean that they're closely related based on those morphological phenotypes. So what we like to consider uh, is the difference between homologous and, an, and analogous. And so take a look here, again, this Australian mole versus the North American mole. Both are kind of long. Uh, both have a sh uh, these like sort of extended claws, front claws here, good for digging, and then reduced eyes or maybe blind altogether. So you're like, gee, these must be related. But in fact, they're not. These are analogous adaptations that have evolved separately in two distant locations, one being an island. Okay. So when you're evaluating uh, homologies, this is what we really want to look at in terms of similar uh, structures, and so we can base our phylogeny on homologies. Uh, you really want to use DNA sequencing, and it's not as easy as it may sound. And so you need to use com pretty powerful computer programs with mathematical tools to analyze these DNA sequences from different organisms. Um, I have a little bit background in DNA sequencing. Uh, it, it's more tricky than it, than it sounds. But basically, you've got to extract the DNA from these organisms, and then you've got to then sequence a area where you feel that there's a common overlap between them. And then, as you can see here, this species and this species. And so molecular systematics uses DNA and other molecular data, such as amino acid sequence, to look at the relationships uh, between species one and two. And so things can happen over time, like mutation. And so you, you've got to be heads up on that. Like you could have a deletion mutation. So in other words, this whole base is removed. Or you can have an insertion here of, of this particular codon. And as, as a result of that, you begin to start to, when you put the sequences side by side, you got to start to look at the, those areas shaded in orange no longer align with the with the number one and number two no longer aligned because of those mutations. But if you were to then um, put this into the computer and allow this to fill in the gaps, you can then start to see, well, actually these are kind of closely aligned with one another when you do that. You can see that there was the two mutations, the result of this insertion and this deletion over here. And so you began to start to look at how Phylo, phylogeny or phylogenetics are, tr are truly inferred based on uh, molecular data uh, and in part due to uh, structural things like morphology. So I hopeful, hopefully this was helpful and um, increases your understanding of the fact that these phylogenetic trees are, are, are inferred based on characteristics such as molecular and morphological and anatomical data. Thanks for watching.